Hello and welcome back to Real Analysis. And first, as always, I want to thank all the nice people who support this channel on Steady, via PayPal or by other means. Now in today's part 58, we will talk about the integration by parts. And I can tell you, sometimes you also see the name partial integration. Indeed, this is not a complicated technique, it comes immediately from the product rule for derivatives. Therefore, one can say integration by parts is the product rule for integration. And so it can help you when you have the integral of a product of two functions. More precisely, the integral should be of the form f prime times g. In other words, we have the product of two functions where one is a derivative. So you see, we need some assumptions for the two functions such that the integral makes sense. Hence, as always, we fix the domain i and the functions f and g are defined on this interval i. And now you see, the function f should be differentiable and of course the product here should be Riemann integrable. And of course we have this when this product here is a continuous function. Therefore, when f and g are continuously differentiable, we don't have any problems at all. This means that for any numbers a, b in the interval i, this integral here is well defined. However, now the integration by parts formula tells us that we can split this integral into two parts. The first part is just the function f times the function g. More precisely, we put in the upper limit b and subtract the number that comes out when we put in the lower limit a. So you surely remember that this was the short notation for this calculation. And then, after this, comes the second part with a minus sign. And indeed, the second part is an integral again. It almost looks like the original integral again, but now we have the prime at g. So you see, here we have the function f times the derivative of g. And in fact, this is the whole formula called integration by parts. Therefore you see, this is only helpful when you know what to do with this new integral then. For example, this one could be easier to solve and then with this formula you have solved the original integral as well. Therefore I would say let's immediately look at an example. And after this one I will show you the proof. Ok, now the example should not be so complicated, let's take the function x times the exponential function of x. Here you might not know the antiderivative immediately and therefore we could apply the integration by parts. It's always worth a try and in the best case we are able to solve this integral here. However, there could be different possibilities to assign the function f and g here. Indeed, here it will be helpful that the exponential function is our function f prime. Therefore, on the other hand, x is our function g. Of course, we do this in this way because we know the antiderivative of the exponential function and we know that the derivative of x is very simple. Which means this integral here in the end will be simpler. Now, I always would suggest to write down all the four functions that are involved here. So we already know the first two, f prime and g, are fixed by the integral here. Then, in the next step, we have to know an antiderivative, which is for the exponential function very simple. It's just the exponential function again. And then the next function g prime is just the derivative of x, which is 1. Ok, and then you see the combination of the first two functions is the original integral, then the combination of these two functions is the middle part, and finally these two functions give us the last integral. Hence, we just have to write it down now. We start with f times g or g times f, which is x times the exponential function of x. And then we subtract the integral given by f times g prime, which is here again the exponential function times 1. And of course, this is what we wanted, this is now an integral we can easily solve. Simply because we know the antiderivative is the exponential function again. Hence, by the fundamental theorem of calculus, we know this is the exponential function where we first put in b and then we subtract when we put in a. 
In summary, you should see, the original integral is solved. And in addition, you can see, we can put both things together. More precisely, this means the function inside the parentheses here is the antiderivative of the function x times x x. For this reason, sometimes you also see this formula here, where the limits a and b are omitted. Or in other words, the integration by parts formula can help us finding an antiderivative. And sometimes, as you will see, one needs to apply the formula more than once. For example, when we have a higher power of x here, we can use the integration by parts formula to reduce the power with the derivative. However, in order to get to the nice constant 1, we have to apply it several times. Okay, maybe that's good enough for the example. Let's talk about the proof of the integration by parts formula. And as I already told you, it follows from the product rule for derivatives. Now, this is an important rule you really should have in mind when calculating derivatives. The derivative of a product is given by a sum. Namely, we first have f prime times g plus the other way around, which is f times g prime. Here, in our case, all the functions involved are continuous, which means we can form the integral of this relation. So you see, we have the integral here on the left hand side, and then we can split the integral on the right hand side into two parts. Of course, you should know this is a property the Riemann integral has. So you see, this is not complicated at all, but it connects these two integrals we already know from the formula above. Therefore, the only question is, what is the left hand side? Indeed, it should not surprise you when you see the derivative here that we can use the fundamental theorem of calculus. It gives us that the integral is given by an antiderivative. And an antiderivative of this function here is simply given by f times g. And there you see, this is the whole proof, we just have to bring this integral to the other side. Hence, the integration by parts formula is proven. So you see, the proof is simple and easy if you know the product rule of differentiation. However, still, it's a very important technique for solving integrals. Therefore, I would suggest that you try it out for more examples. Okay, and with this, I hope that I see you in the next video. Have a nice day and bye!